In the last lecture, I showed you the basics of a scatter plot chart and a bubble chart. And in this lecture, we're going to expand on this concept to create such a chart. And that's showing a specific KPI by geographical location. In this case, our locations are split between regions and countries. This was based on the requirements of this specific company. And the sales revenue defines the size of the bubble. So here you see for the US, I have 900. If I change that to 200, the size of the bubbles readjust. Control Z to go back. Creating this graphic is really simple. What can be a bit time consuming is the initial work that goes in this. And that's to define where these locations are on the map that you're using. So you can use any map. You can use a map that your company uses in their marketing material, or in their company brochures, or you can use a clip art or any other custom map. You will use the same techniques regardless of the custom map that you're using. So if I go to clip art, search for state map black and white, I get this one. Now, the initial work that goes in it is defining where the states that you're selling to are on this specific map. It's best that you restrict your axis between a set minimum and a set maximum for the X and the Y, because you don't want your X and the Y axis to automatically adjust when you add new data. So your countries, the location of your countries should be fixed. The way I did that is I reduced my scale to 0, 010 for the X. And in my case, I also restricted the Y axis to 0, 010. And I pinpointed where these countries were on this map. So I had an X and Y value for each state or each country region here that I want to sell in. So you have to do this one time work. Now, depends how you like to work. You can obviously print this out, draw it out and write down the numbers and then transfer them to Excel and see how they work out on your map and then adjust them. You can do it directly in Excel. Now, if you do it directly in Excel, you will follow the same steps that I'm doing here. So let me remove this one. We're going to build this from scratch. So once you have some numbers here, you're going to highlight it and you're going to insert a scatter plot. I'm going to remove these. Let's remove the grid lines. So you see, these are my points. Now I'm going to bring in the map. I don't need this one. I already have a specific map saved. You have the option of bringing in your map to the chart area. So if we go here to the chart area or to the plot area. It depends on your data and how you're setting this up. So I'm bringing mine to the plot area. We're going to format. And now for the fill, we're going to choose a picture. Here you can directly import a clip art as well. I already have mine saved world map here. And I'm going to import that. You see, and this is then where you can do the tweaking of your countries or states based on your X and Y data. In my case, I had based all of this on an axis between 0 to 10 for the X and 0 to 10 for the Y. So I'm going to make sure that my axis is actually fixed to these values. I'm going to do the same for the X axis. Okay, now they look right. If they don't, we can tweak it here easily. So let's say if I want the value for this one should be Russia. If I want this one to be more inside, I can change this 7.1 to a six. See how that moves. Okay, let's put it to seven. Now I bring in the bubbles as a second step because the size of the bubbles can kind of overlap these. That's why I prefer when I start off to design the locations, I just stick to a scatter plot. And then as a second step, I change the chart type to a bubble chart. And by default, the size of your bubbles are just set to one. 
are all identical. So we have to go into Select Data and here define the bubble size. We're going to use these. Now we can go to Format our series and select how big we want the bubbles to be. So you have the choice between area of bubbles and width of bubbles. Now you can see when you select width, the change in size is really dramatic. In this case, if we look at, for example, Russia, which is this one, and Africa, which is this one, I mean, this looks to me a lot bigger than the actual difference between the numbers. So Africa is 261 and Russia is 700. This looks to me like five or six times bigger when I select the width than when I select the area. The area is better to compare the values. You can adjust the scale. So the scale bubble size to 100, that defines the size of the biggest bubble. Now we're going to change this to, for example, 60. But to see that, I'm just going to click here. You see now they're smaller. So it depends on your map and how close the values are that you want to show on the map. You would probably want to adjust this bubble size. Then we're just going to remove the axes. We don't need these anymore. And we're going to activate the data labels. By default, this value is our Y. That's not what we want, and we don't want them to sit beside them because we can't really tell which one is which. So we're going to format the data labels, change the label that we want to see to the bubble size because that's actually our sales revenue, and we're going to place them center. Now the only thing you have to be careful with this is that your values should be formatted so that they're visible even if the size of the bubble is really small behind it. So if I would make this white and my bubble size is like 20, I'm not really going to see that number. In this case, it's fine. I can also change them to bold. Okay, give this a title. So now if Russia changes to 20, we can still see that 20. Now, as I said, this concept can be used on any map that you have. You just need to do the original setup once, but then you can easily reuse this map for any other KPIs that you want to show.